What's up, Team Cat Mojo? It is your cat, Daddy Jackson Galaxy. So, uh, obviously, a lot of questions get asked of me. I like answering whenever I can. Sometimes it comes down to technique. Sometimes it comes down to knowing cats. Sometimes it comes down to a little bit of that and then a little bit of human diplomacy. Why am I setting all this up? Because you and I are going to Argentina. Climb aboard! Here we go! Heading off to Argentina so that we can meet up with Sofia and her cat, Kimmy. Oh, I see them. Let's go! Ooh. Hi, Jackson and Sophia, and this is Kimi. She's 16 years old. We've been having some troubles. So there's a cat that comes to my house every single day, and she doesn't like it at all. She always attacks him, and she doesn't go out as much because the cat is out there, and she's kind of stressed out. And I wanted to know if there's something I could do or that I should do to stop the fighting or the attacks could it because it's more it's my cat attacking the other one the other one just he doesn't fight back he just stays there <laughs> please help i don't know what to do thank you from argentina bye maybe now what i was saying at the beginning makes a little more sense to you guys what sophia is dealing with and to an extent what kimmy is dealing with is an interloper what does interloper mean i wonder <laughs> definition over the course of my career, I've had to be the ambassador from one cat home to another cat home in order to resolve these problems. And I'll give you, Sophia, a couple of different things that you can do just for the sake of Kimmy and Kimmy's sanity. But at the same time, we have to deal with who is this cat? Let's first start dealing with how to make Kimmy a little more sane. Now, the first thing that I'm hearing from you is that, you know, Kimmy usually does go outside also. Now, that's a problem because we can try to control what goes on around your home. We can't control anything the second that Kimmy steps out of your home. For the sake of her sanity and, let's face it, her health, I would say keep her in. Why do I say health? because it is a known fact that cats who go indoor, outdoor at will, then their life is shorter. Whether, you know, there's people and cars and predators and cat fights that can lead to disease, all kinds of things. So that said, if Kimmy is not against it, if she's not like sitting there like, here are my list of demands, I go outside, you know, and she's gonna make your life miserable if she doesn't. For right now, let's just pretend that Kimmy is cool. She's cool Kimmy. Kimmy is also 16 years old, so the amount that she can fight off predators or infection or stress, there's a ton of reasons, Sophia, to keep her in anyway. So like I said, let's say Kimmy's cool, Kimmy's cool Kimmy, she's like, you know what, you're right, indoors is fine with me. Great, let's move on to our next uh, idea that I can give you. Now we have to deal with the fact that no matter how friendly this cat is, and she looks really friendly, let's take another look at her. Oh, she's really friendly looking. And look at and when she looks in the window. Oh, I mean, come on, that's that's adorable. I know. As innocuous as her presence might be and how friendly she might be, you have to think about it in terms of how Kimmy perceives it. Kimmy perceives it as batten down the hatches, the territory is on fire. Think about, you know, you look out your window and there's a burglar out there. They're a nice looking burglar and they smile at you and everything, but they're still trying to jimmy the window, you know? <laughs> and that's how Kimmy perceives this really adorable cat. Now she's not allowed to explore her world anymore because somebody else took it. There is no greater perceived threat to a cat in a home than another cat outside the home, period. If she's not spayed, then she's putting off hormones all over the place that again, threaten Kimmy. Even if Kimmy is spayed, then she still smells these things and the, that smell of, of hormone in the air equals threat. So all of this information that I'm giving you points to one thing. We gotta keep our well-meaning cat burglar out. And I know that's harsh, but it, it, it's really the only way to restore Kimmy's sense of ownership and, her, and, and get her stress level manageable around this whole thing. So how do we do that? A couple of things that I would have to suggest to you. Number one, if you're feeding our little cat burglar, then stop. I'm sorry to say, just stop. It's okay if you wanna take a dish of food and bring it well outside the boundaries of your yard, outside of your gate, that's fine, do that. 
The second thing is a deterrent. And I don't want to sound mean at all. Having been down this road way too many times, we have to let our torty know that the grass is greener someplace else. So the way we do that is say, the grass is definitely not green here. I, you know, I've been debating this because the thing is that I'm going to recommend products that might not necessarily be available in Argentina, but I'm just hoping that this is the case. The ones that I've found that have worked the best, they're hose attachments. So you just basically attach it to your hose. It has a bit of an electric eye to it. So as soon as um, a cat or any other being, including humans, watch out, cross in front of it, they get wet. And that's it, you know? And, and it's a training tool. It's not something that you have to keep up forever. Once a cat tries to come into your yard three, four, or five times, and every time they get wet, they're gonna be like, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, as long as you know the pathway that Torty is getting into your yard, and it looks like from this picture that it seems like she's coming in the gate. And if that's the case, you just point this thing at the gate, all done, okay? And I, like I said, I know it seems mean, but you gotta look at the greater good here, and the greater good is Kimmy, because Kimmy was here first, right? Right. Last thing, we were talking about feeding, but what about affection? Clearly, she's friendly, and she could be looking through your window, not because you give her food, but because you give her some Sophia cat love, and that also has to stop. You, you have to give her no reason to come into the yard. No affection, no food, and an aversive. All these three things together. Is Jackson being a very mean person? No, I'm not. Because Torty Cat Burglar will find another place to go that's not your yard. Who is the Torty? We know that this Torty is tame. And we know that because she comes into the yard, she has no fear of the windows, she has no fear of you or of Kimmy. So she's been acclimated to humans, she's been acclimated to other cats and to homes. So the, the chance that she's feral is pretty low. If Torty happens to be feral, then what do we do? It is the magical three letters, T-N-R. These magic letters are how we take care of our community cat friends. We trap them, we get them neutered, and we release them back out uh, into the world because we know that that's where they live. They're not friends of humans or they don't think they're friends of humans and uh, they have their own life out there and the most we can do is stop them from breeding and stop them from releasing those hormones all over the place. So that's, the, the, that's what we do with our torty if she is feral. If she's not, and like I suspect, she is tame, then we're, now we're into cat diplomacy. Now we have to go door to door around your neighborhood and figure out where she belongs, uh, whose home it is. And then we have to start having a conversation with those neighbors. And I know that feels uncomfortable, but let me just give you the perspective of somebody who's done this a lot for other neighbors who were too scared of doing it. You're doing it from the perspective of my cat's safety and your cat's safety. That your cat is coming to this yard and my cat is trying to beat her up. And I want to avoid vet bills and infections and disease. Don't forget that there, there are diseases that are passed from cat to cat only in the case of deep bite wounds. It, it'll wind up being like a blood and saliva transfer. So there's a lot to be worried about. And, the, and then you can start getting into negotiations. Let's say your neighbor is like, Oh, right, Sophia, no. My cat likes going out, she's gone out all this time, and, and I'm not changing her life around just to make you happy. Okay, well now we've got a little bit of a problem here, you know? Uh, so then we just change our tactic to, is there any way that we can have shifts where Torty goes out in the morning and you keep her in in the afternoon and the evening so that Kimmy can go out? That kind of thing. You have to try to negotiate because really th there is no other way to do this. Diplomacy is, is what's called for. The one thing I can tell you not to do, Sophia, is to go to your neighbors in a huff and say, I can't believe you let your cat cat roam the streets. I, I can't believe, you, you know, she, you have no regard for my yard, for my plants, for my cat, for me, for my house. Your cat pees and poops in my garden. You know, all that's gonna do, because just think about it if it was Kimmy and your neighbor came you know, all angry and huffy to your house about Kimmy, you'd get defensive because she's your baby, right? And just remember, as long as our torty is not feral, she's somebody's baby. Oh, well that brings us to point number three here. She's feral, okay, we know what to do. She is quote unquote owned, we know what to do. What if she is spayed, she's social, 
and she's nobody's cat. In that case, then Kimmy, I would say, and this is me knowing Buenos Aires, I've been down there, I've, uh, I've talked to folks in the rescue community down there, and, and you guys have a really strong animal welfare presence in Buenos Aires. Use it, get her, and get her adopted. Either you foster her, uh, where she would be in a separate room from Kimmy, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's temporary, and we find her a home. And that is the, the last way to get her out of the yard is to get her into a loving home. The last thing, Sophia, is that if we wanna keep Kimmy sane in the short term while we deal with these solutions, the best thing that we can do is block off the sight lines. So in this picture right here, where our cute Torty is looking through the window, and you can see Kimmy's like, you know, block that window off. Whatever you gotta use, a piece of cardboard or whatever, so that when that cat gets looking through the window, she's not looking directly at Kimmy and Kimmy doesn't have a direct eye line out that window. That's just the, the definition of a Band-Aid that we put in place just for now, just so that we can um, get the problem solved. Oh, and by the way, Lest I uh, exit this video without taking notice of the fact that as soon as you introduce Kimmy, that's a purr. That, that, let's, let's just listen once again. Hi, Jackson and Sophia. And this is Kimmy. She's 16 years old. Nothing wrong with hearing a nice little purr coming out of a 16-year-old. Happy and healthy, right? Okay, so let's keep her happy and healthy. Uh, hopefully this helps you, Sophia. I, I, I do think that a combination of these approaches are going to work. Obviously, I'm, I'm casting a wide net here because I don't know Kimmy very well, and I know even less uh, about our torty friend because you might not know anything about her. So let's find out who she is, and then uh, hopefully these tools will help you approach the solution and the solution is humane on both sides it's taking care of both cats but but just reminding our little tortie that this place belongs to somebody else and not the place that you want to be anyway let it let me know how it goes for you guys i love hearing follow-ups and speaking of which i would love to hear from you guys if you've got a topic that you'd like me to address that's what the comments are for. Just ask me questions. If you want even a better guarantee that I'm gonna answer your question, do what Sophia did. Film yourself asking the question, show me your cat, show me what's going on, and then send it right here. And like I said, better chance that I'm gonna answer it, assuming I have an answer. Which most of the time, at least I have a quasi answer. So there you have it. Till next time, you guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. A thumbs up every now and again wouldn't hurt you or anybody else and might actually make my day. Until next time, all light and all love and all cat mojo to you. Meow.